Hello traders, good morning or good afternoon depending on where you are. This is Mohamed Yaoud, Chief Markets Analyst at PU Prime. And today we're going to have another interesting weekly analysis webinar. We have a lot to talk about today um, because basically it will be a somehow tough week. We have a lot of things that we need to look at on the economic agenda. And technically, I do really expect that maybe we might see some interesting moves during this uh, week. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And if you have any questions, please make sure that you just leave it in the comments section now or during the webinar. And by the end of the session, I'll definitely make sure that everything is answered for or answered to. Okay, without further ado, let's have a look on the economic agenda. And yeah, as we can see today is a, a, a day off for the US uh, market or the US session for the Labor Day. So today we won't basically have a strong opening for the week so far in the London session. We are starting to see some, let's say, tiny moves, uh, specifically on the dollar, on gold and so on. And I do really expect that during the day, uh, as London session, you know, uh, enters into the middle of the session and so on. And by the end of the session, we will start to see some uh, weak moves throughout the day. And as, as we can see, that's because, you know, there is no US trading session for today, as well as Canada. So we're basically expecting a very weak and slow start for the trading week, which is something that we should expect after looking, you know, on the economic agenda. However, moving forward to Tuesday, okay, we do have some questions right now let me just you know get back to it later on tuesday the 3rd of september which is tomorrow what do we have here we have the uh, manufacturing pmi uh, from smp global yes it is somehow important slight difference expected from 48 points to 48.1 not a big difference we have the construction spending we have the uh, manufacturing employment and the manufacturing PMI from the ISM. So yes, the PMI numbers from the US economy are due for tomorrow, the 3rd of September. Do we have any expected? Yeah, the manufacturing PMI, uh, the ISM manufacturing PMI is expected to move higher from 46.8 to 47.5. So those numbers might basically boost the US dollar to further continue the upward move. If you remember, we spoke about the US dollar during the last week and we said that we are trading near some key demand zone uh, that we are expecting a rebound from. Markets basically took a lot of time, you know, inside the demand zone. However, finally we took off. So any positive uh, or more positive data from the US economy might basically boost the upward move on the dollar and pressurize gold to trade lower during the week, which is something I technically expect. And we will have a look on the technicals uh, when we get on the charts in a moment here, okay? Okay, so today is nothing that we should expect on Monday. We are having a US market session close or a holiday. On Tuesday, we are having some yeah, important news to look at, especially that tomorrow on Tuesday, it will be the first US trading session during the week. So uh, adding this to the manufacturing or the PMI numbers generally, Tuesday tomorrow will be a strong US session uh, that we will be witnessing. Okay, moving forward to Wednesday, we have a few speeches from the ECB. We have Elderson. Uh, scheduled to speak and yeah we have the PMI numbers from the eurozone and the German economy as well as the British economy so let's say that Tuesday and Wednesday will be PMI days uh, Tuesday will be the US economy followed by the European and the pound or the British uh, PMI numbers for the month of August we have the trade balance from the US uh, not so important and the Bank of Canada interest rate decision slightly expected you know to lower interest rates from 4.5 percent to a 4.25 percent I know not a lot of you basically follow Bank of Canada however uh, we will have to look at what will happen during this meeting because yeah expected to lower interest rates 
and this would be the second time bank of canada basically lowers interest rates let's see what happens and we have the job openings and the labor turnover survey or the jolts or let's say the job openings and slightly expected to cool down from eight point almost two million uh, job openings during the last month to only eight million job openings during uh, july okay so far not um i mean tuesday and wednesday we are expecting some medium to relatively high volatility however things will start you know being more volatile on thursday on thursday we have the edp non-farm employment change and you have if, if you have been following us for some time now you know that this is not really important yes markets react to the non-farm employment from adp however it's not the actual it's not the official reading for the nfp it's just you know um, a trial to predict what's going to happen with the nfb we have the initial jobless claims and the weekly uh, continuing jobless claims as well and we have the uh the remaining of the pmi numbers which is the non-manufacturing pmi because we will be having the manufacturing pmi as we said on tuesday here we go we will be having the manufacturing pmi here i'm not sure if you can see this or not yet yeah, it's the manufacturing pmi on tuesday and the remaining of pmi numbers which is the non-manufacturing from the u.s economy it will be on thursday as well so uh we also have the crude oil inventory so let's say not a big data release but a tiny or a, a several you know data releases on thursday might as well build some volatility in the markets and we will be definitely having the most important day of all on friday because friday will be 6th of september it will be the first friday for the month which means it's time for the nfb where is the nfb okay before moving on to the nfb let's see because we we also have uh, a speech from elderson from the ecb we have the gdp from the uh, euro economy which is also really important um, and then we move on to the labor market data from the u.s economy so moving on or having a look on the nfb it's slightly expected not slightly it's expected to move higher so the previous month for july we only had 114 thousand new jobs and this month for august it's expected to move to 164 thousand new jobs if you remember anything at all about the last nfb numbers it was a huge downward tick to 114 thousand new jobs and some people you know said that the market crashes that happened at the beginning of august was because of the weak labor data coming out from the u.s economy it's not for that only reason uh but you know the nfb numbers were one of many reasons uh, we we had also the japanese yen carry trade unwinding and so on but you know the weak non-farm payroll numbers were a, a, a thing you know uh, one of the reasons that led to the market crashes however personally i believe let me see if we can get this or not yeah we can perfectly get it here this was the downward move which was really uh, shocking somehow to the markets however personally i see that this move lower in july's readings was due to the hurricane that hit texas in july okay um so this month i would really like to see numbers higher than the previous of course most probably it would be higher than 114,000 new jobs just to be on the same page if nfb numbers fell below the previous reading anything below the 114,000 new jobs i believe markets not i wouldn't say will crash but markets will face a hard time um, because yeah it will be that the labor market is cooling more than expected however 
I don't really believe that you know it will be lower than 114,000 new jobs because the effect of the hurricane should be temporary, and you know this is just temporary layoffs from jobs, and you know during the next or the following month things should get back slightly to normal. So I'm expecting a reading more than 114,000 new jobs. Maybe expectations here from Reuters that it will reach 164,000 new jobs is a little bit. Uh, over expectation, let's say. I, I personally believe it would be some, somewhere around 130 to 140,000 new jobs, and it wouldn't really affect markets so much. A reading will be generally better than the previous one, which is uh, way worse than expected, but it will still show that the general trend of the labor market is cooling without, you know, having a uh, to cause any other fear in the markets or you know of a general economy collapse and so on um, having a look also on the unemployment rates it's here yeah the previous reading was 4.3 percent it's slightly expected to tick lower to a 4.2 percent for the unemployment rate let's have a look on the general trend it's of course moving lower It's, it's moving higher, I mean, for the unemployment, but this month it's expected to tick lower again to 4.2%. I don't really know how much or how markets would react to this um, because markets shouldn't really judge the economy by single data points. I mean, we should look at the major trends. The major trend on the unemployment rate is that it's moving higher. Uh, till it reached the previous 4.3 percent, where the f the 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 one before that was 4.1 percent, right? Yeah, it was 4.1 percent. It moved higher to a 4.3 percent again. As I said, this upward tick of 0.2 percent during one month was due to some temporary layoffs. So we will really need to see. Um, maybe a 4.3 percent slight move lower to 4.2 percent will definitely boost you know, the dollar index uh, during the week and maybe during the upcoming week as well. As for the wages, average hourly earnings, it's expected to tick higher a little bit to a 0.3%. Anyway, the NFB numbers this week wouldn't really change a lot in the markets. That's my personal expectation because it's near. The Federal Reserve will cut interest rates as soon as the next meeting on the 18th of September and uh, I don't really even see a need you know to, to say whether it will be uh, 50 basis points or not because I don't really see a 50 basis points chance I highly believe it will be a zero point or 25 basis points uh, during the next week if the federal cuts interest rates later is there a high chance for gold to make a new all-time high sir no because federal, there is no if the Fed cuts. The Fed will cut interest rates in the next meeting and the upcoming meetings. Um, and I believe gold is already, you know, priced in already that we will see. As we speak, gold is already n near all time, all time highs. Uh, so this is just the market's pricing in of a rate cut. So when the Federal Reserve actually cuts interest rates, it's nothing new, it's nothing unexpected. So I don't really believe this will boost gold any higher. Uh, even more, I believe that this might start a downward correction on gold because we do have some something in the markets which is uh, buy the rumor and sell the facts. So markets have been buying gold recently because yeah, the Federal will cut interest rates. Once the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates, maybe we will see some profit taking on gold. This is my personal and humble opinion. Sir, every September from 2017, gold has always corrected at least 3%. Is September this year different because the Federal cut interest rates and there is an election in America where usually gold will go up again? Okay, if you're gonna talk about seasonality, um, August and September are bearish um, months for gold. Okay, August so far. Let me let me check the chart. Let me check the charts. 
where is gold and yeah let's check the charts because we are done anyway with the economic agenda let's check the charts real quick uh where is gold here is gold where is the monthly chart one month so as i said seasonality speaking or seasonality wise august and september are most of the time bearish months on on gold august this year wasn't actually bearish it was bullish let's say it's slightly bullish because i don't really like this you know low wick um however i believe september will follow the seasonality thing and you know be bearish this, this is just my personal opinion um the election in america will usually will go actually politics is much more complicated it, you know um, you, you cannot say that there is elections so we will just buy gold you never know what will happen okay uh, but seasonality speaking i'm basically bearish somehow uh in september of, of this year okay so if the fed cuts rates the us becomes weak or strong theoretically if the federal cuts rates the dollar should definitely go down because if you are holding you know cash or if you're having a us dollar or if you have treasury yields or treasury notes whatever any thing related to the dollar that gives you interest rates and this interest rate is now being lowered you will definitely or investors will normally look for other alternatives because i have us dollar it gives me uh interest okay if those interest rates have been lowered i will definitely try to think of other investment opportunities let's see good let's see stocks let's see others okay so theoretically if the federal reserve cuts interest rates the dollar should go down but things in markets are not so theoretical because if we all know that the federal reserve will cut interest rates so the dollar has already been lowing, um, you know moving lower for some time for the last three months the dollar or two months this is the new candle for this month i mean during july and august the dollar already lost around four percent why is that because we all know that the federal reserve will cut interest rates so markets don't really move according to the federal reserve decisions but markets somehow move according to our expectations of the federal reserve so far federal reserve haven't really hasn't really cut interest rates yet however because they were saying that we will start cutting interest rates markets already reacted and the dollar is trading lower for two months so technically cutting interest rates lowers the dollar however when the action actually happens by cutting interest rates we might see some upward corrections before moving lower so the general trend is yes lower interest rates means lower dollar and that's a good question by the way so when the federal cuts rates us will be strong that's another question you know that's just the opposite of the previous question that we just answered okay on the weekly time frame if you remember anything that we explained during the previous week we actually mentioned two demand zones we said that this is a strong demand zone around the levels of 101 roughly and we had another worst case scenario we said that the if we didn't uh, you know respect the levels of 101 as a demand zone we will go to the following one which is the 99.0 uh, but 99.70 however during the the previous week we can see how well we basically respected this level of demand and we are moving higher so after one let's say one two three four five almost five weeks of bearish candlesticks on the weekly time frame on the us dollar we suddenly have this you know full bullish strong candle on the dollar where we gained around one percent and personally i do believe that during this week we might see an upward move um, to continue this bullish retracement let's say 
so we had the move lower a retracement maybe another retracement here and another retracement so yeah maybe we'll be having you know an extended move higher during the week to target the levels of 103 maybe because on the weekly time frame yeah although and this is a bullish candlestick right and although i'm expecting that we will move higher during the week um we might see a little bit of a move lower just to form the lower wick of the weekly candle before moving again higher okay so during the week personally what i'll be doing is i'll be waiting for retracements on the dollar to buy okay for the eight hour time frame you can see how well momentum was basically a leading indicator so we were moving lower we had the demand zone and near this demand zone or just inside this demand zone where we were trading we had a bullish divergence so momentum said okay there is no enough bearish momentum to break below this demand and that's why we had this beautiful you know double uh, bottom that's the first bottom or the first low another low and we went higher i think we will need to change the color here wait let's do something like this okay so we had the w pattern or the double bottom and we moved higher we even broke above the previous high the last high in the downward move and this is what we call as the point of reversal so this is pretty much a perfect uh change of character that we can see here in a break of structure so yeah during the week i'm looking to buy the dollar and i'm looking you know to go as high as the 103 points during the week as long as we hold above this demand zone so the last low that we have here is 100.50 and yeah as long as we're trading above the 150 maybe we can go down a little bit as we said to form the lower wick on the weekly time frame and we will ex I'm, I'm really expecting to move to, to see this move higher however i don't want to see the dollar moving lower and break below the 100.50 if we break below the 100.50 for any reason during the week i'm basically out and i'll change my uh technical scenario on dollar from bullish to bearish however i really believe this is a hard scenario if you remember anything that we said during the previous week's webinar we basically said that gold doesn't really look so bullish anyway yes i know that the headlines everywhere is just saying okay gold is ne trading near all-time highs uh, we registered a new high and then the other day we registered a new high and so on it's just you know a refreshing of the same all-time high but anyway we mentioned that the momentum is not so powerful to the upside what i mean is you can see clearly that gold is yeah moving higher on the price we are registering new highs higher than the previous so new higher highs okay but momentum is just moving sideways and this is where you know that momentum is not strong to push uh, higher so in this case you don't you know uh, buy i know the, up, the 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 trend is upward um and i know that everywhere they tell you that the, the trend is your friend however the trend is your friend only when you have momentum and momentum is just you know very weak here uh on gold on the weekly time frame we we are having a top here we are definitely having a top after this bullish week which was on the 12th of august we had another bullish week but the candle is really indecisive and if you actually uh attended our webinar about the supply and demand you will know the difference between an explosive or a decisive candle which is here and an indecisive candle so this is a, a, a definitely indecisive candle 
followed by another indecisive candle but this one is bearish so what's what's being formed here on on uh, gold is definitely somehow a top formation okay um so yeah weekly i'm bearish weekly i'm 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 really bearish on gold even momentum on the weekly time frame is a huge bearish divergence gold is moving higher on the price but momentum is moving lower with you know some sort of top uh, formation here so let's say on the weekly time frame we can go as low as 24.40 around 50 pips uh, 50 dollars sorry which is 500 pips and then maybe we can reach 23.87 during the week so yeah i am bearish on gold nothing pretty much to say on on the lower time frames let's see if we can have any sort of you know pattern here maybe but no 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 i don't really like those patterns so, yeah okay um so 20 24 40 and 23 87 will basically be my targets on gold during the week and on the one hour time frame look at how many times we are just testing those highs one two three four and five we already broke the previous low we are just breaking lows so yeah 24 40 is something i'll be looking to target uh during this week okay someone left a question in french and i don't really speak french so should i translate this wait it's interesting you know to translate a question from french hopefully it will make sense from French to English, but if the market does not form this confirmation then next week, what could be our hypothesis in case of a range? Okay, this is the translation of the question. Not sure what you mean about the market. Is it the dollar or gold? Yes, what you're saying is technically, or what I have understood from what you are saying is technically correct. Maybe markets will not do anything during the week so we are expecting a continuation on the dollar higher and a move lower on gold yes but maybe we wouldn't see this uh during this week maybe we'll just have another week candle on the weekly time frame here but you know uh, you're talking on gold yeah maybe we can have another indecisive candle higher and lower with the nfb okay it is possible however um I'm bearish technically you know I, I'm just bearish I'm, I'm seeing uh, expecting a move lower as we said seasonally gold is bearish in September we are just starting September here after a strong move weak momentum I think we will just see a move lower during the week if it didn't so it just didn't okay what's happening on US oil okay we broke below support on a weekly time frame and we are nearing another support did we break below oh, it's a it's a monthly time frame yeah we broke below this sideways uh sorry where is it Trading view is just giving me a hard time here. Yeah, we broke below the symmetrical triangle here. Broke lower, retest, and a move lower. So I'm basically bearish on the US oil. So yeah, maybe this week will be a week where commodities actually all uh, move lower.
Okay, let's have a look on the smaller time frame. On the smaller time frame, we're having um, a level of demand here somehow. And if you want to draw the demand specifically, yeah, this is a demand, or it used to be a demand zone. So it pushed prices higher. There were some unfilled orders here. When we went back to test it, again, another push higher. It's now an exhausted level of demand. So I'm not really looking to buy US oil during the week. During the week, I will be happy to see a break below $72.50. And a move lower is expected. So as long as we are above the 7250, I'll not touch the US oil with a 10 foot pole. A break below the 7250 is a short signal entry to me on the US oil. Okay. How about the indices? I'm basically bearish on the US indices for some reason. I'm not I'm not sure why. Uh, but I don't like what's happening here, especially on the SP 500. You see this. those levels on the S&P, which is the 5650, it pushed prices lower around 9%. Was it the, yeah, it, it was in July. So we moved higher, momentum was great. However, recently we are doing nothing, absolutely nothing. So from those levels of resistance, I'm basically expecting that we won't see a move higher. Of course, we will have some US data during the week. We will be having the NFP and so on. But technically speaking, I would like to see at least a retracement. Maybe this retracement will just be, you know, uh, a retracement before moving again higher and breaking, you know, the previous high and, and reaching all time highs and so on. But on the short time frame, I would really love to see a break, you know, lower and a retracement and in order to trade this let's have some conditions here look at the volatility sharp move lower sharp move higher lower higher and so on okay to me i will wait for the smp to break the five no, sorry, it's uh, too far. The 5590 points on the SMB, SMP is where I'll basically be shorting. So it can do whatever it wants, you know, above this level. But if it moves lower, breaks below the 5590, I'm shorting the S&P for some time, okay? It might happen this week, it might not happen, but anyway, I'm not looking to buy the S&P unless I see some, you know, strong momentum. So this week, the dollar strengthened gold. What do you mean strengthened gold? What, when is the time to open a position and close a position, sir? according to your technical setup i mean every strategy should have entry criteria and exit criteria so as per the market structure let's say i'm saying that during the week i'll be watching smp if i have a break below the 5590 i will short the smp on the medium time frame this is my entry criteria if this happened i will enter the position if it didn't happen i'll just wait okay what would be my exit criteria for this trade let's say um, because i'm i'm looking for a retracement of this upward move so I'll, I'll just look at the fibonacci retracements so a move lower below the 5590 i'll be looking to at least target the first fibonacci retracement which is the 5460 and this would be my exit strategy let's say theoretically speaking we moved lower and broke below the 5590 maybe somewhere around here 
will be my short position my stops will be above you know this whole zone and my target or first target will be around the levels of the first Fibonacci retracement because I'm trading the retracement this is almost a 1.29 or 1.3 risk to reward ratio maybe it's a good trade idea and so this is my entry and this is my exit or the stop loss maybe during the week if I had this perfect move maybe I will not place my stops higher maybe I'll, I'll stop my you know place my stops a little bit around here even for a better risk to reward so it depends on really what's your technical uh, strategy it, it should give you uh, an exit and entry criteria this is where you know I should enter here and exit here it's not related to time it's only related to technicals okay how much TF how much time frame how much what what do you mean uh, sorry I always ask because I'm new in this industry so why is it that every time there is a war anytime at any uh, anywhere at any time it has such an impact on the market what is the trigger money money is the trigger if there is some sort of geopolitical tensions or concerns or economic uh, let's say instability and so on investors just move their money if I'm a huge investor let's say I'm a multi-millionaire okay and I have investments on gold I have investments in the dollar I have investments in real estate and so on and all of a sudden something is wrong you know some geopolitical tensions and so on maybe some of my investments now are too risky I will get out of those investments and maybe invest in something more safe as we call it, the safe haven and that's why uh, you sometimes see gold moving higher with geopolitical tensions why because investors you know shifting capital from one market to another and that's why you have huge fluctuations if there is a reason that people should be worried I hope this short answer provides you uh, with some guidelines if your dollar and pound dollar going up its impact same on gold let's have a look on the euro dollar and the pound dollar right now the euro if you followed our last weekly analysis we mentioned that we have a supply zone here right and it was exactly around 1.2 uh, 1.12 on the euro and we mentioned that we are expecting a move lower and that's pretty much what happened uh during let's have a look on the weekly time frame it's definitely a bearish candle so this move lower was supply there were some unfilled orders here now they got triggered and we will continue the move lower on the euro during the week i'm expecting a move lower on the euro versus the dollar as well maybe during the last or the, the first at uh, the beginning of the week i mean we might see an upward retracement nothing wrong about that a healthy retracement before moving again lower so i'm expecting a series of lower lows and lower highs on the euro any upward move is something i would personally look for to buy and maybe our targets will be placed around the levels of 1.0915 this is where i'll look uh, for my targets to be placed the same thing is basically on the pound the pound we set uh, that it wasn't really looking bearish and the only reason I was slightly bearish on the pound is just because I was bearish on the euro and it followed our you know bearish view however I personally didn't trade this move on the pound and yeah again I'm, I'm still bearish on the pound just because I'm, I'm bearish on the euro I'm bullish on the dollar any upward move is basically something I'll be uh, not trading but I would want to see an upward move if you want to trade the pound maybe from the levels of 1.31 or maybe 1.32 might provide you with some shorting opportunities on the pound let's say at least to target this level which is just between the 38.2 and the 
and the 50% Fibonacci for a move lower. So that's for the euro and the pound. So I don't know what will happen with the NFB numbers and I don't know what will happen with the PMI numbers during the week and so on. We have a lot of data on the US economy or from the US economy during this week. I am not the US government. I don't know how the numbers will play out. However, as per the technical analysis during this week, and just to give you a summary of our weekly analysis, I am bullish on the dollar, I'm bearish on gold, I'm bearish on the euro and the pound. So that's that. And yeah, I'm bearish on uh, the US indices. So I'm, I'm basically bearish on everything except for the US dollar. And this is somehow the market moves. If the dollar, the dollar moves the markets anyway. So during this week, we might see an extended upward move on the dollar, which will add, you know, some bearish pressure on the euro, the pound, and gold, even the US oil and the uh, US indices. However, if you have watched this webinar with me, you know that we have conditions placed for every trade. Once the conditions play out, so as we said, the dollar, I'm bullish as long as it's above the levels of 100.50, okay? Um, gold, I'm bearish as long as we stay below the last series of highs on the s p we said as long as we are just below this huge supply zone i am bearish and so on okay do we have any questions left no no any insights on btc i don't usually discuss you know cryptocurrencies um on the live session I don't discuss BTC on the live session. But yeah, okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. Um, okay, I think we're done with the questions here. I really wish you a profitable week. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much. And yeah, um, we will follow up with you during the week if, if you know, uh, anything new happens. And until then, we will be meeting you in the next week on Monday in our weekly analysis webinar. Thank you very much for attending this with me and I'll see you again next week. Until then, please stay safe and trade with a stop loss. Goodbye.